After watching this video, you will know how to calculate the possible noise spectrum for common mode and differential mode voltage. Scope. First, we will have a quick reminder how common mode and differential mode flow in the device. Then, let's see what equation describes the spectral content of PWM signal. Next, we will calculate our PWM spectrum for an example signal and we will see how much differential mode and common mode noise and we will do summary and see differential and common mode spectrum on one, one graph noise path. We know that differential mode noise flow on both cables in opposite direction and the amplitude of this current will be affected by frequency of the signal, amplitude of the current, and inductance in this loop. And regarding common mode noise, we know that it flows both cables in the same direction, then by capacitive coupling and back the main parameters affecting the amplitude of this noise will be voltage of the noise source value of the capacitive coupling and the frequency of the signal. Going further, let's see the PWM signal noise spectrum. Spectral content of PWM signal. We can draw spectral content and the maximum amplitude of our spectral content we can see here on the envelope, then we will have minus 20 dB per decade roll-off at the first breakpoint, and then at the second breakpoint we'll have minus 40 dB per decade roll-off. And the value of amplitude depends on two times amplitude of our maximum voltage times tau. Tau is the on part of our period measured between 50% amplitude of our rising edge to 50% amplitude of our falling edge. And then we need to divide our equation also by period. Our first breakpoint equation is 1 divided by p tau and our second breakpoint is 1 divided by rise time or fall time, depends which is faster. Typically, those are the same. But we can see that our first breakpoint depends on the duty cycle and our second breakpoint depends on rise time. We can shift second breakpoint lower to the higher rise time. Let us see some calculations. Calculations of spectral content of PWM. For this purpose, I prepare a parameter for an example signal. Amplitude 1 volt, frequency 1 MHz, period 1 microsecond, tau T on 0 0.5 microseconds, rise time 10 nanoseconds, U2 cycle 50%. And from previous slide, we know our equations for amplitude, first breakpoint, and second breakpoint. Our amplitude for this signal equals to 1 volt, that is equal to 120 dB microvolts. And we can see on our envelope this is maximum amplitude of a spectral contact on this signal. First breakpoint is at 0 0.64 MHz and second breakpoint is 31.83 MHz. You can see first breakpoint is under 1 MHz, so it's correct, and second breakpoint is a little bit more than 31 MHz. To the graph I added second envelope. This is limit line for EEN 5014-1 conducted emission 
class B quasi peak. We have our limit line from 150 kHz, 30 MHz. We can see how much above is our spectral content of PWM. This is how much at the maximum, at the worst situation, we will have noise from our signal. It can happen that probably the, the noise is a little bit less in the real situation. This is a theoretical value. If we would measure the signal directly without any components be in between, just a direct signal, for example, from our clock, then this will be our spectrum. And in reality, there are some parasitics in between and components. That's why we need to calculate differential mode noise and we need to calculate separately common mode noise. Let's see equation for differential mode noise. Spectral content of conducted differential mode noise. We can already see that the graph is different than graph for pure PWM signal. The envelope is also different. We have first breakpoint and second breakpoint, but we don't have 40 decibels per decade attenuation. Our amplitude is referring to this point on the envelope. Amplitude is equal to 2 times peak current of the signal times inductance of the filter capacitor. This would be your input capacitor for your SMPS times fundamental frequency, so your switching frequency. First breakpoint here, it's also referring to the input of your SMPSs, but here we also include parasitic resistance. Equation is equal to R divided by 2 times P times parasitic inductance of the input filter capacitor. And the second breakpoint is the same as for pure PWM signal. Let us see calculations. Calculation of conducted differential mode noise. Here we have the same signal parameters, but we include also our input filter series inductance, so parasitic inductance, then nano -hanus and our input filter series resistance, thick resistance, 100 milliohm. Amplitude value equals to 0 0.02 volts, that is equal to 86 double microvolts, and this point we can see here. So because of the equivalent series resistance of the input filter capacitor, we have this additional row of here. And first breakpoint frequency, 1.59 MHz. And second breakpoint is the same as before, 31.83 MHz. And we can see that we are now closer to our limit for EN 55014-1 class B quasi peak, but still we need to have a lot of attenuation if we have this amount of noise in our device. Let us see now how equation for common mode noise looks like. Spectral content of conducted common mode noise. We can see already that this graph is less complicated as for differential mode noise. We have only one breakpoint and minus 20 dB per decade. Our amplitude equation equals to 100 times peak voltage times parasitic capacitance times fundamental frequency, so our switching frequency. Typically, parasitic capacitance is 
capacitance between your device and the reference plate in the test setup for conducted emission and the voltage is switching node peak voltage of your SMPS and the first breakpoint and only breakpoint for conducted mode noise is the same as for differential mode noise second breakpoint 1 divided by P times rise time let's see calculation calculation of conducted common mode noise we have the same signal but I added additional 500 picofarad our amplitude is equal to 0 0.01 volt that is equal to 80 dB microvolts and you can see our amplitude here and our first breakpoint and only breakpoint is the same as, it, as second breakpoint for differential mode noise 31.83 megahertz and you can see it here for 10 nanoseconds our roll-off will be above 30 megahertz we will not have roll-off in our conducted emission limits lines that could be problematic also you can see that difference between limit and the amplitude of the common mode noise is much less for the signal that we calculated it next let's see a summary of common mode and differential mode noise spectrums summary common mode plus differential mode noise spectrum we can see envelope for differential mode noise and common mode noise for the same signal that we saw before and we have our limit lines for class B quasi peak EN 5014-1 and what we can see that our common mode is much closer to limit line than our differential mode noise and this will depend on parasitics but also on SMPS parameters on our noise source if we take into account voltage and current then for SMPS with low voltage and high current our differential mode will dominate and for SMPS with high voltage and low current common mode will dominate and for example that can happen in high voltage designs in electric cars thank you and in the next part I will talk about common mode and differential mode noise calculation but for radiated emission SMPs are sourced not only for conducted noise but also for radiated noise see you then